What's going on guys, Unknown Player here and today this video is going to be crammed with a bunch of info about the upcoming DLC event called The Dawning for Destiny. Yesterday I covered everything you need to know and a breakdown of the gameplay trailer and that video will be in the description if you missed it. But since then a load of other cool facts and bits of gameplay have emerged and I'll be rounding up all of those in this video. So while I basically spout the facts to you about this event, in the background there's going to be some gameplay from another YouTuber and a friend of mine called Mesa Sean. He actually went over to PSX and got to capture some gameplay which I'll be showcasing. You can see the new scoring mode, even a new skeleton key item for the Nexus Strike in there as well. So a massive thanks to Mesa Sean for sharing with me his footage and be sure to check out his channel in the description. He's got a bunch more videos of the Dawning which is definitely worth checking out. We've got a lot of Dawning info to talk over. So the first thing which is definitely going to be very good news to you guys is that green engrams are automatically going to be decrypted into armor materials or weapon parts. You don't need some kind of consumable or perk, you simply just need to hit level 40 and then all your greens are going to decode into armor materials or weapon parts which is really awesome. It was actually quite a big problem because it would clog up your inventory and force you to basically dismantle them and if you didn't then the blues would go to your postmaster and then delete exotics and legendaries and skeleton keys which is definitely a big deal. So this is a really awesome quality of life improvement and lets you still basically get the weapon parts and arm materials without dealing with those green engrams all the time and there are bound to be some other little quality of life updates also in the dawning which I'm sure we'll find out about soon. So the next thing I want to talk about is to do with these presents, these strange things in front of that massive door in the tower. So it turns out you open a new present every single day, so it's literally an advent calendar which is really funny. It doesn't obviously lead up to Christmas but the same idea. And it's supposed to be the citizens giving us presents for protecting them as guardians and each day one of the chests will become available to be unlocked. So you basically want to come back each day for a new item inside these chests which is really really cool and I'm sure there'll be a load of people every day rushing over there and seeing what they get. I'm personally really interested to see what is in them. Of course there'll be 21 chests if there's one for each day. So I'd say probably moats and planchy materials, maybe silver dust, glimmer, and maybe in the bigger chest, because you can see some are physically bigger, they might drop like legendary or exotic engrams. So that's just my guessing. Let me know in the comment section what do you think is going to be in these chests and what do you think the big ones are going to contain as well? Because they're definitely a big difference between the smaller ones in the front. So the next announcement is that SRL is actually going to be available in private matches and will also remain permanent after the dawning event ends. So SRL is basically here to stay forever with those four maps. I'll talk more in detail about everything else new in SRL in a separate video because there's quite a lot to go through but essentially the big announcement is that SRL is here to stay and will be in private matches. So next up let's talk about these strikes and there's quite a lot to get through. We're going to be talking about everything new and all the items and stuff like that. So firstly the Nexus Strike, this has a Taken version and also a normal version. With the Taken you can see of course the boss is pretty similar to the Blighted Mind. I was kind of hoping I'd never see another Taken as long as I live but I guess they're back for this one strike. But there's also a normal version like I said. So both the Taken and normal versions of the boss battle, they feature the Aegis Relic which is the shield from the Vault of Glass. In the normal version you use it to cleanse yourself, it spawns in this like pool of light. In the Taken version you use it to break his shield, the same as the Templar basically. I really cannot wait to use the shield again, it's got to be one of my favourite items to use in Destiny. Although it isn't a permanent relic, you can't use it for the entire strike boss battle. It does constantly despawn and then spawn again with the damage phases, but it's really cool to have this and also some other mechanics from the Vault of Glass in this new strike. Now in terms of these strike specific loot items, there is an armour piece, which you can see right here, which is actually a titan mark. He wasn't actually a titan so you couldn't preview it properly on the character, you can see this exists and is a brand new strike loot item. Nobody knows the weapon just yet, it's probably the Imago loop, if not a new weapon, but either way I'm happy whatever it is. Now moving on to the Omnigal strike, this now features Devil Splicers. The final room is very much changed, it's no longer the kind of like cramped hallway trying to like peek out and do damage from a room full of ads. There's a lot less of them but the door behind you is now also locked so you can't go back there, you're forced into Omnigal's room but luckily the ads are way less aggressive. So this is definitely a room you want like a dark drinker or a raised lighter for, it's going to be essential but like I said the ads won't be absolutely piling in like they used to, they seem quite manageable. Now of course on top of that there is finally the Tannic Strike which is now CO5'd as well. This features things like a Devil Spicer Walker, all the enemies of course are Spicers too. And Tannix is also now infused with Siva, so he's now called Tannix the Perfected. And his cannon actually does arc damage now instead of solar. The one thing I'm not a fan of honestly is the final room and it seems a lot more difficult with actual mechanics. So when you get into the room everything is pretty similar, you do a little bit of burn damage to him. Then he's actually going to grow a shield and you need to go and destroy these Siva pods to remove it. There are also going to be a ridiculous amount of ads that pile into the room as well. So that really is going to slow down the pacing of the fight and make things a lot more difficult. I think honestly they could do without it. The normal Tannic Strike is probably my favourite strike in the entire game. I absolutely love the pacing and the encounters. It's just a really fun strike to play through. And especially if you're really efficient you can actually kill him before the ad spawn. But now it's going to be a lot more drawn out and it's going to be a real boss battle like I guess the other strikes are. So be prepared for that. 
So of course this gameplay is also showing off the brand new strike scoring where you get points and medals for certain actions. The strike isn't actually a separate mode or playlist, it's in the heroic and normal version of the weekly playlist and also the nightfall as well and essentially it's a new feature that will remain permanent even after the dawning event ends so it's a feature from now on. So on top of that Commander Zavala is going to be offering bounties for the strike scoring which give you extra vanguard rep. So among his bounties, one of them is going to be related to the Nightfall, and once you complete it and turn it in, you're going to have a chance of getting the new Year 3 Icebreaker, and that is how it's obtained no quest or no engrams. You simply have a chance of getting the Icebreaker to drop as a weapon when you complete that Nightfall related strike scoring bounty from Zavala. So on top of that, the Thunderlords are actually new exotics, they're separate weapons. The Abaddon is the solar version and Nova Mortis is Void, you can see them right here. And both of these Void and solar versions will have their own exotic quest to obtain, which is cool, not sure how you get the quest in the first place or trigger it, but these are going to be two missions which should be a lot of fun. And all the exotic quests are normally pretty interesting in some way, and I imagine these are going to give you some kind of cool task, and probably give you some cool lore and backstory to the Thunderlord, as well as why these element versions exist as well. So those are the two exotic weapons we know we're getting for sure in this dawning event. There could be other secret guns like the Dubious Volley, we're not too short on those. I'll go through now the ornaments for the exotics we already have now. First we've got the last word, the sequel, which is kind of like this blue kind of like faded pattern. Not really a massive fan of this, looks okay, nothing too special. And we also have the addendum, which is definitely my personal favourite. It's got an awesome kind of like Wild West Sheriff's look to it. Next up we have the Thorn, the Rose of Acid, which has definitely been upgraded, both of them have. And this one looks like it's literally been dipped in some acid. And the Rose of Corruption, which is actually coloured pink this time, so it does actually suit the Rose a little bit more. And it's got this green kind of like hive energy coming from it. Next up the Black Spindle, we have the Ragabone, which I'm not really a fan of myself, looks very just strange and random. Kind of like the Queen's pink weapons, mixed with like a Grass and Malak, mixed with like green stuff. It's just very weird, I'm not really too sure the meaning behind this one. And the second one is Cold Between Starts, and this one is very, very cool, of course a Taken vibe. It's basically the same as the Stolen Will Shotgun. I think the Taken effect is a little bit beaten to death at this point, but it still looks very cool in my opinion, definitely my favourite. We also have the Red Death, which we've seen before, Steel Witch, with these spikes all over it in the red and black theme. And the White Witch, which is of course is white version with blood dripping out of the cracks from it and then finally we have the icebreaker with the first one being a dune maker and this is like a camo theme really cool in my opinion it's actually like altering the weapons design it looks very very different how it normally is so I quite like this it's a bit strange i'm not sure how i'd like it in game but it definitely looks very interesting so gotta get points for that and then finally there's the nano hearts which you've probably seen before in the trailers and this one again is very awesome i love how particularly the icebreaker it changed the actual geometry of the weapon completely so those are all the ornaments of the exotic weapons and now finally there's a quick look at the tower and what it's going to look like covered in snow and the decorations, the presents again. But there you go, that is a complete look at everything we know so far about the dawning event. A lot of cool stuff to be excited for and I'm really impressed so far about what they've done with this event. Definitely a massive step compared to Festival and almost close to the April update in terms of content so really looking forward to it. Of course any more news and updates in gameplay be sure to stay tuned right here on the channel, got lots more videos on the way. And once again be sure to check the links in the description to Mesa Sean's channel. He's got a load more gameplay of the dawning and you can see the strikes from start to finish the new dialogues as well so a lot of awesome dawning content to check out if you enjoyed the video a like rating would be much appreciated as always and i'll see you guys in the next one